back. I'm just Shannon Lovett and I'm back with some book love, so let's chat. Got a bit going on. I really don't have a ton of like books that I've read since last time I talked to you to go over. I'm gonna say that and then there's gonna be like 10. Not quite 10. Um, but then I also want to talk to you about some that, some that I've recommended in my classroom in the last week and a half of school, two weeks-ish. Um, and some of those I've already talked to you about, so I just wanna tell you that they're on there. Uh, but I want to try and keep up with that this year and then some revisits and corrections some books to movies it's just getting to be a lot so I just want to make sure that I make a video that's not two hours long of uh, being able to talk to you about some of those things so give me a minute as always to get the table cleaned off and then we'll chat okay welcome back so my candles not here okay uh, we will return. We've done this one before. It's Sexy Librarian by Fly Paper Products. Um, it is a mix of mint, nutmeg, and citrus. Oh, you can hear my air cutting on. Welcome to Ohio in August. <laughs> Although we are only a few days from September here, and actually on Friday, I'm having some dental surgery done. Um, so I wanted to get this video done before that, thinking that I might be um, on the couch recuperating and I could edit a video during that time. Ooh, that did not blow out about set my library on fire. That would be bad. That would be very bad. Um, let me put that over there. So we'll get a little good smelly stuff going. Just drinking water because I've taught all day so need to stay hydrated. Nothing crazy going on there. You can see my, I'm officially a book wizard, not a bookworm. My Christie sticker right there, read books, be kind, stay weird. My Hercule Perot sticker. Uh, I love that. I just love those stickers, don't you? Just like the last time that we filmed was, um, this is not right. I don't think this is right. Sunday, August 6th. I feel like that's not right. Anywho, we're gonna change it today anyway. Today that I am filming, it is Wednesday, August 30th. Go. just so you know when I filmed it versus when I finally get the video out so hopefully it will be soon there is a three-day weekend coming up so there's that there's always the promise of time to edit a video I got my hairs cut yesterday so if you are used to watching me with a lot of hair and usually stacked on top of my head I got you know about this much <laughs> I think it sure felt like it anyway <laughs> but uh, it's a little short for what I normally have, but I like it. Remember, I have an upcoming wedding in June, and I knew I just needed I needed to get some changes rolling. One of those would be I need my hair cut. I need to do a little better job of trying to figure out what I want to do uh, when it comes to that wedding, and um, maybe even taking out some of those gray tinsely things by then. We'll see. I'm not that concerned. All right, so let's start with the ones that I've read since the last time I talked to you. That's always where I start. Um, and it's a very small stack, but that's just because the ones that I own that I read, I don't have a lot that I owned. Um, I listened to some audios. I uh, borrowed some books, so that's kind of a mix there. But um, <laughs> as usual, I will start with Agatha. Uh, my 63rd book of the year was... Um, included in this one, this is a four-in-one volume, Agatha Christie Postmark Murder, and the one that we were discussing was Appointment with Death. This one has a Caribbean mystery, nemesis, murder in Mesopotamia, and Appointment with Death. We've already talked about murder in Mesopotamia, and I um, have read that one from in here too, but a Appointment with Death is the one that we read since the last time I talked to you. Um, it was our 31st Agatha reading in chronological order. So if you are new here, I um, started a group in December, January-ish of 2021. Nope, 2022. There you go. And um, we Zoom about every couple of weeks, three or four weeks, depending. And we are reading Agatha Christie's novels in chronological order. And we're on the 31st one, or we were. That was Appointment with Death. Um, it was not my favorite Agatha, but it was very good. It was pretty short because like I said, it's included in this one. I don't have a standalone of it, um, but it was pretty short. Uh, 
usually when I do the Agathas, I read the story, I listen to the audio, I watch the TV or movie adaptations. Uh, and there were several audio versions of this one that I read or that I listened to after reading the story. Um, one was more a dramatization. So again, if you had not done Agatha before and you're like, hmm, I wonder where I should start. You can start anywhere. You don't have to read them in order. Um, she does have reoccurring characters. This is a Hercule Poirot. He's a reoccurring character. Mm, is it a Hercule Poirot? I feel like, yes, it is. He, yeah, because, uh, yeah, that's right. It is. Uh, so it is a Hercule Poirot. But so he's a reoccurring character, but you don't have to read those in order. We just wanted to uh, pay attention to how she develops a character and how her writing developed over the course of her lifetime. Um, so that's why we're doing it that way. But I did really, there are several of hers that we've done so far that have like both of those kinds of audios. The audio where it just reads unabridged, reads you the story. A lot of times those are by David Suchet, who's also playing Hercule, Hercule Perot in the TV adaptations. Um, and then several of them have these dramatizations where they're much shorter, an hour or two maybe max, um, but you get the gist of the story and it's more of a performance. So just a different experience. I like to do them in all different formats. There's also a movie, an older movie with Peter Ustinov, I think is how you say his name. We've seen him in, in Perot in various other books that we've already read, such as there's an old Death on the Nile with him. Um, I feel like somewhere I read that this was his fourth time appearing as Hercule Perot in adaptations, or maybe he appears four times as Hercule Perot. But we've seen him before, and he has definitely grown on me. I was used to seeing David Suchet in the TV adaptation. So when I watched the first movie after doing this, like I think I probably saw him a long time ago. But when I started watching them like this while we're doing this experience, the first time he was there, I was like, that's not David Suchet. I mean, Hercule Perel. But especially in this one, he definitely grew on me. Um, I would also say in this one, this does not follow the book. The TV adaptation with Peter Ustinov does not follow the story as closely as most of the other um, books to movie or books to TV adaptations. This one, just, it doesn't. It, they change so much. <laughs> but it has a lot of good stars in it. So maybe look that up on Internet Movie Database, imdb.com, um, and take a look-see there. And then I don't remember what format or what... Um, well, what do you call that? What platform that I watch the movie on? Um, we have a Roku TV, so I always just go over to search and search and then see what comes up and then hopefully it's one that I don't have to pay for and I know I didn't pay for it. Uh, there is also a David Suchet adaptation of this and it's so far off the mark, like you might not even know that it's the same book, the same story. It's ridiculously off the mark. I still enjoyed it as I always do, but just way off, <laughs> way off. This is definitely one that I would argue that um, it breaks that rule of making sure that the reader has enough information to solve the puzzle before the end. Yeah, I don't think so. Like, I just don't think you have enough information to be able to do that. When we had our discussion online, uh, people pretty much agreed with me on that front. So maybe not the, the best Agatha if you're not like reading all of them. Maybe this is not the one that is the best example of her work. The clues are there, but it would be difficult. It would be difficult putting everything together by the end on your own without knowing a little bit more that then is revealed in the end. So, you know, just depending on how you like your mysteries. I love Agatha Christie. I enjoyed reading this. I'm glad we read it, but it's not my favorite one. So that was my number 63 read of this year. My number 31 Agatha overall in chronological listing. This one follows um, Dumb Witness. Murder in the Muse, depending on you know which which list you're following, and it comes before Hercule Poirot's Christmas. It's the num I, it's about number 19 on the Hercule Poirot um, meter, like in order if you're reading chronologically. This is about the 19th time we've seen Hercule Poirot. Again, depending on which list you're following, this one's kind of creepy. Like the whole family that you're following, the Boyntons. They're weird. I mean, like, it's a really strange family. So, you know, Hercule Poirot likes the psychology of things. This is definitely a psychological one. You have a lot of the Christie Hallmarks, the love, setting people up, happy endings when it comes to putting people together. 
um, overhearing a conversation and that's how we know something's going on. Think uh, death on the Nile. Sorry, I had to go trim that wick. I was seeing smoke and if you know my history here in this house, we don't want smoke or soot. Like we don't want it. <laughs> it's a little I'm traumatized. There we go. That looks better. I rarely even do candles anymore because I'm just so traumatized by that whole soot issue. Uh, but every once in a while and for you, and because fall is coming up and that whole aesthetic, like, oh, I really start craving those fall candles, don't you? I've already had pumpkin spice. It is literally August 30th. Starbucks came out with their pumpkin spice like middle of August. Um, and normally like I hold off on a matter of principle, but um, you know, I also do not live close to a Starbucks. So it's a half an hour even to get to one. Uh, but I just happened to like be running errands and I was by one on the day that they um, had them on the day that they were, you know, like releasing them or whatever. I was like, I just, I love them. I absolutely love them. And I got one. So there's that. And it was delightful. It was delightful. Also, I've already, I've already worn this shirt for you on the videos. It's happiness can be found in the dark, dark, I'm sorry. Happiness can be found in the darkest of times. If only one remembers to turn on the light. And that's a quote by Albus Dumbledore because September, September 1st is what Potterheads? What is September 1st? What's that? Oh, it's Return to Hogwarts Day. That's right. So uh, I keep saying I'm going to do a separate video talking just a lot about Harry Potter and the movie adaptations and the books and how that all works out um, and spinoffs and all that. But I just have not yet done that. But it's just too close to September 1st for me not to wear the t-shirt. I probably should have worn it on Harry Potter's birthday, which is when? Potterheads, when is that? Well, oh, is that is that right? Is it July 31st? I believe it is. Or is it August 1st? It's July 31st. It's July 31st. I am a Potterhead and I still have to, I'm still like doubting myself on that, but I'm pretty sure. July 31st, Harry Potter's birthday, September 1st, back to Hogwarts Day. That has nothing to do with Agatha. <laughs> now, I am also reading, there's a play version of this, which is a little bit different. We haven't seen that. I feel like there's something weird on my glasses here. Um, I've not read one of Agatha's plays before, and this is one that she did the play adaptation. It's in another book that I'm gonna show you eventually because it's laying around here. Uh, and I started reading that and that has been super interesting to see, to read, there is something flying around. I don't think it's a fly. I swear, I feel like every time I do a video, there are flies or something. But I think I saw this earlier and it's like, like a bee or maybe one of those hover bees or something. So if you see it, I apologize. There's nothing I can do. I don't even have the door open this time. So I don't know what the problem is. Um, anywho, it is really interesting to see how she takes one of her stories and turns it into a play. And then reading all this, the um, stage directions and seeing some of the changes of like characters she's taken out or whatever has been really cool. Um, and I should have already finished it. I, you know, back to school, uh, we've been back. What is today? I said is Wednesday. So technically it's been two weeks because we had like three days with, well, we went back to school. Teachers were there Monday and Tuesday. Kids came Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Then last week was a full week. And then this week is a full week. Um, so it's been really two weeks, I guess, since we've been back. Um, and when I get back into that mode, it takes me a bit of a, it takes me a bit of an adjustment period there to remember to turn off work and sit down and read when I come home every once in a while or read in the evening without falling asleep because I'm exhausted from the change in um, my summer schedule to the school schedule. So I just haven't quite adjusted yet, um, but I am gonna get it done very quickly. I need to finish the appointment with death in the play version and then I'm, it's taken me forever to read our next one. Um, our next one is, um, easy to kill, which I am really thoroughly enjoying, but it's taken me forever to read. I just, I need to sit down and concentrate. That's all I want to say about appointment with death, but I've got the wrong one up here. It was in this Agatha Christie's postmark murder. The next one that um, I have for you is also in Agatha. Oh, look, I did have a copy of appointment with death. I read it in this too though. So that's weird. But look at that. I always like to show you these vintage copies. Look at that cover, it's ridiculous. And I made lots of notes on this one. I, it's not gonna sit on there. 
but um, I forgot that I had that. There we go. I forgot that I had that one. Uh, but the next one that I'm going to talk to you about uh, is another Agatha, and it's a holiday for murder because it does come number 32 in the chronological order of the list that we are following, which is off of the official Agatha Christie website. They have a list that you can click on that is their chronological list, so that's what we're using. Um, but if you've been with me, you know it's a little harder than that. It just, you know, Goodreads has a list going on. Um, I use an app on my phone that is an Agatha Christie app. I love that, but it also often varies from the same um, chronological listing that we're following, so there's that. Uh, but this is the next one. This is number 32, and we actually read this before we officially started the group's chronological reading because I threw it out there to the people on Facebook and said, anybody interested in reading these? And when I got people to respond back, then I talked to them and I'm like, hey, how about we read um, some of the Christmas stories before we actually start with the number one Agatha Christie in you know January or whatever. So that's what we did. Um, so this is Agatha Christie's A Holiday for Murder. Once again, a great cover and a great little size paperback. I love these. Look at the um, Hercule Perot. I love the little silhouette there of him. And this says originally published as Murder for Christmas. Um, and then on Goodreads, it comes up as Hercule Perot's Christmas, Hercule Perot number 20. So I know that's a little difficult. Sorry, I feel like I have like a hair and then they've got that fly going around. I got all kinds of stuff going on here. Um, but <laughs> a little confusing on this one and the title, but I had already read this one. So I just went back through, read again, and then listened to the adaptations just to kind of refresh my memory. And we discussed those again. And I highly recommend watching those and reading those during the Christmas season. Just again, they're very seasonal. I love seasonal. Read those December of 2021 before we started the chronological reading in January of 2022. I think I said that correctly. In this one, there is an old miserly rich guy. He calls the family in for Christmas um, to celebrate. They think he's just being, you know, um, like starting to know that it's his last day. So he's calling them in out of some sort of love, family family love, and he's not. He's a terrible person and things go awry. Uh, but you get a good holiday feeling. So put it on your list, read it during Christmas, read it during December. Hercule Perot gets called to this guy's house He's not particularly happy about it because the guy, he doesn't know the guy and the guy basically just summons him and Hercule's like, you don't summon Hercule Perot, but then he is so, you know, just nosy. He has to figure out why somebody would call him to the house. So he does show up. This is one that, you know, if you're paying attention, I do believe you could solve. It's a good like manor house mystery. We like those closed room mystery. If you're looking for an Agatha closed room mystery, she is the queen. Great adaptations. I highly recommend that one. And pretty sure I already talked to you about it too because I should have been making videos back in December of 2021. Pretty sure. Um, I did want to also mention to the Agatha fans out there, take a look at the Agatha Christie newsletter that you can sign up for on the official agathachristie.com. Um, they have this nice Hercule Perot reading list and you can get a UK version and you can get the US version because remember, sometimes titles are different. Um, so there is that. And then if, you're, if you've signed up for the newsletter, they just put out these like little magazines. Now, obviously they're online, but you can print them out, but they have things like a crossword and they will talk about like a particular theme. So this one is July of 2023. It's the world of Agatha Christie and the theme is love. So they um, mention some of the love detectives, uh, Parker Pine, Tommy and Tuppence, Satterwaith, Harley Quinn, Miss Marple, and Hercule Perot, and um, rate them according to when they're solving mysteries that have to do with love. They give you excerpts from some of the books, which is super cool. Um, and then, like I said, there's some crosswords that are in there. I just think it's really neat. If you're an Agatha fan, don't miss out. Go to agathachristie.com and sign up for the newsletter and it comes to your email. It's a wonderful thing. Uh, and then they also have those extras like the reading list. Good? All right, my next one uh, is number 65, the 65th book that I read this year. And I do not have a copy of it, but um, I actually listened to an audio and this is kind of a weird one because it is Meg, Angel of Death. 
Survival, and it's in the Meg series, the Meg, like the Megalodon, it's in the Meg series, and it's a 1.1. So it's not one, and it's not two, it's kind of in between. And obviously the reason that I read this is because I read Meg, the Meg, and I watched the movie, and then I've watched it, I don't even know how many times after I went and saw it in the theaters. I've watched it um, on television and demand and all that. Um, and I loved when I read the first book. I thought it was just super. It's really well done. Um, so I'm just like, oh, I forgot. I haven't gone back to that series, and I really would like to. And then it was a little confusing trying to figure out, like, what was next? And then what book is the Meg 2 based on? Um, and I'm still not really sure. So the next one that was listed in Goodreads as the next book after the Meg, the first one, um, is Angel of Death, Survival. Uh, but it was super short. Like, I don't think I have it on here. I don't know why, but um, it's not very long. It was really odd that it was not very long, but I really liked it. Um, and you can tell it's kind of in between. I would call this a short novella. I listened to the audio. It takes place after the Meg, uh, but before Meg 2. But the books and the movies don't run completely together. Like um, the main character, what's his name? I can't think of his name right now. It's like right on the tip of my tongue. But anywho, the main character in the Meg, the first book and the movie, um, the people that he is with, the family that he finds at the end of the first book, it, it's weird. Like it takes a minute to try and figure it out. And then when we went to the theater this time to watch the Meg 2, and then the daughter is there, the one that you're used to, but then the love interest from the first one is not there, but they do explain it away in the movie. I'm a little perplexed as to why they do that because that's not what it's like in the book series. So it's a little bit confusing, I'm not gonna lie, but this is one of those things where the books are really good, the movies are really good, but they, they aren't really married together very well. This little novella deals with the pup of the Megalodon that you see at the end of the first movie. So it's in captivity and they're trying to figure out like, what are they gonna do with this? How are they gonna handle it? What does the world think about this? Like it's a little different, but basically that's what it's focusing on. Um, and it's that challenge that the entire novella follows. It looks like I read the Meg and rated it back in 2018. Uh, it is a pretty scientific series. If you like that scientific fiction, you know, it doesn't mean that everything's true. Like, I don't think we have found a Megalodon <laughs> that is still alive um, that I know of, but it follows the science of that. Like, how might that happen? Or how might they be finding their way into the real ocean? Or what kinds of catastrophes would that cause if it were out there? Um, how would you keep it alive if it were in captivity? What struggles would you face? Like, it follows all of that scientific data. All right, so highly recommend it. I mean, I don't know. I, I'm sure I gave it a four out of five, I would think. I'm not very good about rating, remember. <laughs> I do it on Goodreads, but it doesn't really print out when I do that. Um, the 66th book that I read, I also, did I listen to this or did I read the ebook? Does it say? Audiobook. Um, I did The Quiche and the Dead. It's a Pie Town mystery. It's a series, and it's the first one in the series. Ah. It's by Kirsten Weiss, W-E-I-S-S. -S. Um, I've talked to you many times about Killing Time with Cozies. They're on YouTube. Uh, we meet for book chats and book sprints most Sundays. Um, and her name came up, that author's name came up, and I'm like, oh, I really feel like I've read something by her. So I went and looked on my um, list, and um, what I had read by her is I started a book that is the Gnome... I don't know, I don't have it on here. Something about a gnome though, um, and it was super good, but it was just a sample, and then I couldn't get the book after I read the sample of it. Um, so, I mean, I could buy it, but you know me, I don't really wanna buy, especially not audios. So uh, instead, I thought, you know what, I'm just gonna check out her again, because I really liked that sample, but I couldn't get a hold of it. I'll try this one instead. It's a different series. Um, is it a different series? It might actually be the same series, but later on, uh, I don't remember. Anywho. Pie Town Mystery Series. Oh, Gnome Alone is the one that I listened to the sample. 
Uh, the main character in this series' name is Val, and she owns Pie Town. Um, Charlene is a little amateur sleuth that works with her, and she seems to be dragging Val into that amateur uh, sleuth status because there is a murder that, or there is a death that takes place. Um, that is connected to Pie Town, and it's about to ruin their business. So they need to figure out what is going on and how they can get people to realize that it was not them. They were not connected with it. It's super good. I like um, a lot of those cozy hallmarks, small town, the punny title. I love a punny title. Um, a new entrepreneur, owner of some place that you're like, how the heck are you making enough money to live off of selling small pies? <laughs> a jilted romance, multiple murders. I'll definitely continue this series, and I would now read anything that Kirsten uh, Weiss has written because I do really, really like her. This is the first in a series, uh, and it sounds like a series that I would like to read and keep up with seasonally. We've got The Quiche and the Dead, Bleeding Tarts, Pie Hard, uh, and then the fifth one is Gored to Death, which I'm sure would be great to read during Halloween. I doubt I'll make it to there yet, but or you know, make it to that by the time we get to fall, but that's okay. Uh, and Kirsten Weiss has a couple of other ones. Perfectly Proper Paranormal is another series by her. Um, and then this is also one of those that I noticed, again, that it says Tandor Media, uh, an audiobook by Tandor Media, and I seem to really like their stuff. So however they choose who they do um, or the editors or whatever, like it works for me. That is something that now I kind of pay attention when I see Tandor Media on my audios. Um, the next one that I read, I do have a copy of. It is called School Days. Some these guys up there. It's by Robert B. Parker. I talked to you about him not too long ago. Um, this is a Spencer novel. Uh, it is part of a series. Hey. It's pretty far down in the series. I don't know why I'm not seeing it right off the bat here. But, um, I mean, I'm looking and there's at least 30 or 40 in that series. Ah, it's number 33 in the series. Um, and I wanted to read it as school started because it's got school days on the front. It's like a little hangman. I thought, oh, that'll be cool. And then I started reading it and it's immediately about a school shooting at the beginning of school. Probably not the best idea. But after I started reading it, I just really like it. I like that like gumshoe kind of quality, um, the humor. And when I say humor, it you know, Spencer doesn't set out to be funny. It's a very dry humor, but I really, really appreciate it. Okay, I gotta let Stella out. I don't know that I've ever shared a picture of Stella. I'll have to try and find one and add it into the intro for you. Um, but Stella is our rescue. You know, she's like a 40, 50 pound mix of we don't know what. She obviously has some pit bull in her. She was supposed to be a lab. She is so obviously not a lab, uh, but um, she's, you know, 10, I feel like we're maybe 12, somewhere around there as a rescue. Um, but she runs in and out a lot. And especially she is adjusting to back to school uh, where she's here uh, protecting the homestead by herself. And then when we get home, she's like, are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? No, I just want to sit down for a little while. <laughs> but running in and out there. Uh, this is my fifth Robert B. Parker novel. I've read a lot of the Jesse Stones. I really like that Jesse Stone series and the TV adaptations. If you have not done those and you're a mystery fan and they're not cozy, so um, more of a, a modern mystery. Uh, and even when I say mystery, they're kind of thriller slash mystery, maybe even more on the thriller side than the mystery. But I really, really like the Jesse Stone series, but I've read several of the Spencers too and I really like him. I also read a Sonny Randall. That's another um, series, the uh, character in one of his series, and I liked that one too. It's just a really good balance of trying to like follow along the story, figure out what's going on, and then I like how it does a reveal, and then I really like his characters, his main characters. I just really, really like them. Uh, we're still dealing with the PI, so it's not technically a police procedural. He does work well with the police. Like he, <laughs> I say that, and it's like terrible to start off with. Uh, but he figures out how to work alongside the police. Maybe not completely friendly, but uh, it works out. They don't like him, but he sets them straight that he is going to do this with or without their help. 
Uh, I also like the smattering of like vocab that's out there. Like I had to look a few words up. Weisenheimer, Reebok, R-H-E-B-O-K. I'm like, what? what is that? So I like when I'm reading a book and um, it has some vocabulary that I don't know. I just really enjoy that. There's also quite a bit of mentioning of food and drink, which is very common in the Jesse Stone series too. I highly recommend it. I have a lot of these Robert B. Parker um, novels and I plan to continue reading them maybe on a more regular basis. Ah, I don't have copies of any of the other ones I'm going to talk to you about, so I'll just leave that one up there. My number 68 read was The Unexpected Mrs. Polyfax. It's number one in the Mrs. Polyfax series by Dorothy Gilman. Um, my cousin Deb listened to it, and she mentioned it to me, and she, I don't know, we just seemed to know, like, hey, you're going to like this one. You probably should put it on your list. Um, so I did, and it was a great listen. I really enjoyed it. It's a slower, cozy mystery. And um, when was this published? Because, whoops, dang it, I don't have it. <laughs> um, oh, it says that it came out in 2018. I find that really hard to believe. There's no way it came out in 2018. There's no way because I watched a movie and the movie was like 1970 something. So maybe the audio, the it was the, it's talking about the audio um, copyright. There's no way. It's got to be older than that because... The movie that I watched was like 1960, 1970 something, and it was called Mrs. Polyfax Spy, and I loved it. Like, I loved it. It's old movie quirky, but it's super, super good. Um, and then my cousin Deb also said that Angela Lansbury plays uh, Mrs. Polyfax in another um, adaptation movie kind of thing, but I haven't been able to track that one down yet. I'm not really sure why, but these are definitely cozy mysteries, but a weird little twist. Mrs. Polyfax is an older sleuth, so senior sleuth, if you like that term. Um, and she, her, uh, her children are married adults with children of their own. They've all, you know, moved um, on. And she doesn't want them to feel like that she has to have them for entertainment. Her husband has passed, so she's a widow. She's looking for something, and she's not quite sure what. So she offers herself up to the CIA to be a spy. They're like, that is not how this works. But then that is exactly what ends up happening. Um, and then she's sent on a mission that is supposed to be very low-key, not dangerous at all. It turns up being very dangerous. And she does end up having the skills uh, to really help the CIA out in this particular endeavor. So love it, love it, love it. Um, she starts in the United States. She goes on location to Mexico City to um, do this task that they've asked her to do. And then it goes on from there. She has always dreamed of being a spy. But, you know, I mean, imagine somebody walks into the CIA, a 60-some-year-old woman, and says, I've always wanted to be a spy. Can I be a spy? Like, it doesn't work that way. But it does. Now, it doesn't follow all of the cozy rules. Um, it's probably a bit more, mm, I would call it maybe a little bit more descriptive uh, or violent maybe than um, some of the other cozies. But just because you're dealing with the CIA and spies and spies being caught, I will definitely continue with this series. I enjoyed the narrator on this one too. Uh, it's Barbara Rosenblatt. And uh, I don't know how many are in the series, but I got up to at least seven when I was looking at it, but I, there may be more. And then that's it. That's all I finished since the last time I talked to you. I have a lot of other books to talk to you about, so stick with me here. But let me move these around. Um, and I think the next one I want to talk to you about is just revisiting some of those that I've been recommending in my class. And then there are a couple that I had to add Goodreads reviews for because I didn't already have them out there for some reason, which was a little bit weird. But um, trying to get all that caught up as well as my bookshelf. So again, if you've been with me, you know this, but if you haven't, then just a little refresher. Um, these are the books that I have reviewed in my YouTube videos so far. Um, the ones that are like this, I have read. The ones that are like this are on my TBR, but I usually give you my TBR also. Uh, lots of Agatha, lots of cozy mysteries, um, some book of the month. I can't tell if you can see those or not. I don't have that great of eyesight, but book of the months are up there. Um, the book of the month club, <clears throat> some seasonal reading is in here. And then we start down with, Hey, these are ones that I've talked to in my classes. 
gentle reminder, I teach high school uh, English. This year, I teach all freshman English classes. Now, I do have some sophomores that did not make it when they took my class in uh, the years past. And this year, I have two juniors, I think it is. Two? Three? Two. Two juniors uh, that somehow fell through the um, cracks and they didn't pass freshman year and they didn't do it online, so they're back in there. But it's all freshman English. So I do have general classes and honors classes, so there's that distinction. But the last three years that I've been in the classroom, I've had a class of seniors, um, just like one section of that, but I don't have that this year. And I mean, I have to say, as much as I miss my seniors, it has been really interesting um, to just have freshmen all day long and be able to focus on that. I'm really, really liking it. And I am knocking on all things holy because I do not want to jinx myself. However, I probably shouldn't even say it. I shouldn't say it but I'm going to, because so far it is the truth. And I am knocking on wood. I am really enjoying my group this year. Um, you know, every year you have no idea. You have no idea what's coming until you get there. And then every class has its own flavor, personality. The mix of people makes a huge, huge difference. Um, and I've just met some really entertaining people, some really interesting people. I've enjoyed talking um, on the side to a lot of these kids. Uh, for some reason, this is, we've been in Blanchester for 28 years or so. I think it's 28. Um, and now, I mean, we've been getting kids of former students for, I don't know, the last 10 years or so, because we were 20 something when we came to Bland. But this year, there's an onslaught. Like there are a lot of kids where we had their parents as students. We had their parents, um, my husband coaches every sport imaginable to man. And he's been coaches of a lot of these kids' parents. Um, there are many, many, many that we've had older siblings in class. And it's just interesting, like you love to see it. It's kind of like the circle of life. Like I just really enjoy meeting the kids of students that I've had and seeing how they take on some of those characteristics or not. Um, and then also brothers and sisters, just to see that family dynamic. I think that's so super interesting. So really enjoying it. Hope I didn't jinx myself. You'll find out because as I do these, I'm always talking about my um, job at the same time. Uh, and hey, I'm even saying that and there was a fight in my classroom this week. And I'm still saying I really like these kids. Um, I, immediately afterward, I got apologies and, uh, you know, instant regret, which is always good. You don't always get that. You can't always guarantee that people are going to be like, God, that was really stupid. I shouldn't have done that. You just, that doesn't always happen. Uh, last year, especially, I seem to get a whole lot of, I don't care. And when I'd say that is not very nice, I do not care. <laughs> uh, there's not a lot I can do with that. I can't, if you, you know, I'm appealing to your humanity. Um, so even with the fight, it's been a great start to the school year. I'm very excited. Um, uh, I enjoy getting up and going to work every day. And I really feel like that's about all you can ask for in a career is if you enjoy going to it every day. Okay, this is a little precarious, but I'm feeling okay about it. I'll just have my candle back here where you can't see it, but I can smell it. So just trust me. Um, these are three stacks of some of the books that I've recommended in my classroom in the last two weeks that we've been back. Most of these I've already talked to you about, so I'm just going to show them to you very quickly to remind you that I have reviews out there for, uh, for them. Uh, maybe give you a little bit, but not a whole lot. I don't want to spend too much time <laughs> um, on this, but there are a couple that I did have to add reviews, so I want to keep you caught up as the year goes on, okay? So we will start with Lori Hall's Anderson's books, which are right here. There we go. Um, and I have talked to you about these. Now I've talked to you about Lori Hall's Anderson in 18, 22, 24, 25, 26, 30, and 31. Some of those might be book hauls because I have picked up a number of her books um, and I would pick them up anytime I'm in a thrift store for sure. Um, to add to my shelf, to add to my classroom shelf, to put in a free little library. I highly, highly, highly recommend her, but um, I have already talked to you about most of hers, if not all. So there's Prom. This one's lighthearted, funny, but super good. Twisted is a lot more serious. Twisted, I would say read after Speak. Speak, you must absolutely read by her. I think every freshman should read this, boy or girl, um, but it would be a hard one to teach because it gets a little 
much for some people, um, but I'm not big on trigger warning, so I'm just telling you, like, just read it. You need to read it. And if you are not in high school and you never read it, go back and read it. Uh, but then when Twisted came out, she's a high school freshman, like starts on her very first day, freshman year. He's a senior boy, so two very different characters. Um, and I would say kind of along the same tone. This one's a little lighter in tone, but has those deeper, darker issues that you then do need to deal with at some point. So super good, both of those are good. Highly, highly recommend, easy um, to say, hey, you need to read this book. So I've talked to you about Prom. I know I've also talked to you about her nonfiction book, Shout. It kind of goes along with this. If you were in high school and you read this, because it, I mean, it's been published for a long, long time, 1999, I think, maybe, maybe even before that. I don't know. Anywho, it's been out there a long time. You may have read this in high school. If you're an adult, then read Shout. Shout is her memoir in verse, kind of, and oh my gosh, it's so good, so, so good. Um, if you are a high school girl, um, again, Shout is another one that I would highly recommend just knowing that it's mature. It has a lot of language and situations in it that you just want to be aware of, but I still would highly recommend it. I don't have a copy of that one, but highly recommend anything by Lori Halls Anderson. The next one that I would recommend, and I have recommended in my classroom so far this year, is Lois Lane. It's by Gwenda Bond, and this is the first one in the Lois Lane series. It is called Fallout. Um, I don't know how many are in the series. I read this back in 2018. I have already recommended this one to you also, but it was pretty early on in the YouTube um, segment, so I'm just going to remind you. Young adult novel, it has to do with Lois Lane, obviously. Um, Superman, it's a play on that. Lois Lane and Superman are um, teenagers, so it fits that young adult genre. It's modern day. Lois is starting at a new high school. She keeps having to move around because she keeps getting into trouble and she swears she's gonna keep her nose clean. Uh, and then she walks in and she sees somebody take, getting taken advantage of and she can't stand for that. And then there's some weird stuff going on. She can't figure out what's happening, um, but she's a very strong person and the person being hassled is not. So she steps in, it's so good. Like, it's very fun. I have not continued with the series, but I really would like to. I just haven't, because there's so much out there that I'm reading. But I do want to return to that series. And this is also one of those books where it's obviously laying the groundwork for a series. You know it's going to be a series, but it ends. It is a complete story. You could read this and stop. Um, or my guess is when you pick up the next one, it will have laid the groundwork for that second book. Uh, the next one is Ali Condi. I highly recommend her. She's also a young adult author. This is a dystopian kind of book, and I have not talked to you about her. I um, put a Goodreads review out there in 2021, but for some reason, I don't have it on my list of ones that I talked to you about in on the YouTube. I don't know why. Um, but Cassie is the main character. In this futuristic world, you have to go to a matching ceremony. Um, she goes there to see who she's going to get matched up with, like as a mate with a mate. Um, and they trust the system. This is just how it works because, you know, love is difficult. So why not follow a computerized um, suggestion? And it doesn't go well. Um, some things happen that make her start doubting the system. And then she has to decide how much she wants to buck that system. So, you know, always young adult, romance, um, triangles, lots of things going on there. Really enjoyed it. And it is a series. I've only read the first one in the series, but I would continue. I just haven't. The next one that I've already recommended is James Dashner's The Maze Runner. I try to, especially at the beginning of the year here, I try to um, recommend books that I think would appeal to a lot, a large audience, because they have to choose an independent reading book that they're going to read for the first 10 minutes of class most days, um, and they can choose whatever they want to. But it's crazy. I don't know how it happens because I can't relate, but there are a lot of people when you say, hey, you can read anything you want to, they're like, just tell me what to read. I don't know what to read. I will happily tell you what to read, um, but if you don't have a list going, you know, you need somebody to be like, hey, read this or this or this or this or this, right? Um, I am that person, but at the beginning of the year, I try and pick books that I think are easily accessible to freshmen, 
Um, and I let them know, like, mostly girls read Match, mostly guys read, read Maze Runner, but not really. Like, I'm a girl and I've read all of these, and I don't care if my protagonist is a guy or a girl. It makes no difference to me. But um, I try and make sure I give them a nice smattering of, there are a lot of different books out there. Do you like dystopian? Have you watched Hunger Games? This might be the one for you. Uh, do you like realistic fiction? If so, maybe this might be the one for you. That's what I try and do. But um, I did not have a Goodreads review out there for this, and I've not talked to you about it, so I'm throwing it out there now. Uh, this, I also call this kind of a dystopian one, even though we don't know what the time period is, but this is not how the world operates, so it falls into that um, kind of dystopian. Um, there's like a labyrinth that the main character is tossed into. He doesn't know how he got there. He doesn't know what the purpose of him being there is. There's another group of people that you meet. Nobody knows what's going on. Um, and you learn along with them, like, what are they going to do? How are they going to escape? And what is the purpose of all this? And that does make it a page turner, I think. It makes the novel move along very quickly, um, which is a big hit when we're talking about freshmen, especially non-readers. You need something that's going to grab you and keep you moving because you're curious. Like, how is this going to work? And you know what? I think this is how it's going to work. I wonder if it's going to turn out that way. Like, that's a good way to keep you interested. So, highly recommend James Dashner's Maze Runner. Um, science fiction, dystopian, definitely young adult fiction, but everybody seems to like it. They have made multiple movies out of this, so if you've seen the movies, go back and read the book. But easy to recommend. Now, the next one, they're over here, so I'm trying to figure out what's the best way to do this. The next one that I want to recommend to you is John Grisham. I have recommended him to you numerous times. He is easy to recommend. Um, and I recommend him at the beginning of the year. It might be here on the bottom, so let me just show you some covers. The Firm is him. Some of these you're going to recognize because they turn them into movies. The Summoning, Summons, sorry. The Rainmaker, definitely a movie. A Painted House, which is not like his normal, like, law thrillers. That's a little different. The King of Torts. The Client. Excellent, excellent movie. The Brethren. I don't remember seeing that. I'm going to have to look and see which ones of these got turned into movies. The Innocent Man, which this is also a nonfiction. Um, a Murder of Injustice in a Small Town. This is really cool. I feel like I've talked to you about it before. But my understanding is he was reading a newspaper. He was traveling and he was reading a newspaper and he read the story. And he was like, how could this happen? So he started investigating and that's how he ended up writing The Innocent Man. So crime junkies, this is for you. Uh, if you're a true crime person... Um, and you may have already started reading a lot of true crime novels. That might be one that you have not thought about, and it's super, super good. But I wanted to recommend um, uh, John Grisham early in the year because of his book Bleachers. This is also not a crime procedural like these, not a courtroom drama. Bleachers is a fabulous book to read this time of the year if you're into high school uh, Friday Night Lights. Uh, it's a great, great book. It is written for adults, and I am recommending it to freshmen, but I find that there are a lot of freshmen, especially boys, that do not like young adult fiction, um, and they more easily gravitate to books that are written for adults, uh, especially if they are sports-themed or, or some kind of theme that they're into. They would like those. So highly recommend Jane, or John Grisham's Bleachers. Uh, it's an adult character. I think he's somewhere in his 30s, maybe. His high school coach is dying. Um, everyone knows the high school coach is dying, so players over the years are all coming back. They are meeting in the bleachers in the evening. They're reminiscing, and it brings up memories of something that happened, I want to say during halftime of a playoff game, um, that was never really dealt with, and they all start dealing with it, kind of. Um, kind of. Uh, so super interesting. It is much, much slower than his other novels, but I highly, highly recommend it. Now, I definitely need to get back to reading John Grisham. I really enjoy him. I have more of his books, so he needs to get on my short list for sure. But highly recommend any of those John Grishams. And I especially, this time of year, say read Bleachers. I really do think next year, like I'm at the beginning of the year, I'm going to give you a reading list. And I'm going to be like, look, this is the time to read these particular books. <laughs> I, I'm going to try and do that. And then the um, next one that I want to talk to you about is Dean Koontz. 
He is another author that I've read multiple books by him. He's super easy to recommend. A lot of freshmen come in having not read a lot, but they watch a lot of movies. They know who, who um, Stephen King is. Their parents are reading Stephen King um, and they, they like the movies. So then they're like, maybe I would like the books. Um, it's a little hard to just flat out recommend Stephen King to a freshman. And I feel like Dean Koontz is a little bit easier to recommend a freshman. Um, he also is writing for adults. Uh, but it's kind of that um, science fiction horror, but not as horrific graphically as Stephen King. He usually has more of a science base or maybe even supernatural base than Stephen King does. I like numerous series by Stephen or by Dean Koontz. And don't just take it from me. Very first day, some you know, I was talking like you got to find a book. What do you want to read? And I had a kid who said, I don't, I don't know. Here's what I like. What should I read? And I gave him um, Odd Thomas. He read it in the first three days. So I went and got book two and gave it to him. He read that in the next three days. Uh, and he has started on to the next one. He's on number three right now. Um, so I'm trying to like track them down. We have some in my classroom library. There are some in the library still, even though it doesn't function if you know our history. Um, and then I have a lot that I have here too. So I'm just trying to track down all of those series um, so that when he gets done with one, there's the next one if you wanna continue the series. But I love Odd Thomas. I love the Fear Nothing series. Um, he has several standalones that I really like, so I really enjoy it. All right, my hair is starting to get on my nerves. What time is it? It's like five o'clock, so we're gonna have to do the ponytail. All right, not the best YouTube hairstyle here, but it is five o'clock on a school day, so there is that. Um, so highly recommend uh, Fear Nothing, Lightning, The Mask, Odd Thomas, Seize the Night, The Survivor, all of those. I'm pretty sure I've talked to you about all of those too, but here are some um, copies so you can see those um, covers if I have not. But uh, Soul Survivor, pretty sure it's a standalone. There's an airplane, it's super, super good. The mask, I actually taught this the first year I was at Blanchester teaching sophomores. They handed them to me and said, hey, this is the novel you're gonna teach this year. I didn't love it. Actually, that's probably the first time I read Dean Koontz though. I didn't love The Mask, but I liked him enough to try another book. And then I just continuously read the books. I'm pretty sure that's what happened. Um, and then Lightning was probably the next one that I read and this one's the one that hooked me. I love this book. Um, if you'll remember at the 4th of July, celebration in Blanchester, I was behind a lady who turned around and said, hey, when you need a guest on your YouTube channel, I'd happily come and tell you my favorite books. And I said, just tell me now. And this was one of her top three or five. Um, and I totally agree. I love this book. It is one of those that I can't hardly even tell you what it's about though, because it's about something so specific. It's so good. And it's the discovery that makes it so great. Um, Seize the Night, I think is the second one in the Fear Nothing series. Super, super good. Here's that fear nothing. And then obviously the one that he's probably most known for is the Odd Thomas series. Now, Odd Thomas, they did make a TV movie for it. I'm pretty sure it was only like TV. It's so quirky. It's one of my favorite adaptations. They do such a good job of capturing Odd Thomas and all his quirkiness. Um, and this is one of those books, movie, whatever, um, that have a twist in the end that you're like, oh, what just happened? And you stop and you go back and you're like, can that be true? And then you start thinking back and you're like, yep, I should have been paying better attention. So super, super um, author. I love Dean Koontz. I highly recommend him. Uh, another book that I have recommended already at the beginning of the school year, I think I've got two more here maybe, um, is Touching Spirit Bear by Ben Michelson. I talked to you, you, I've already recommended this book in episode 17, so I'm not gonna spend a ton of time there, but this is an easy one. It is young adult survival fiction, also some redemption going on. The main character has to um, show up for a program. He's either gonna go to jail or he's gonna do this, so he decides to do this restorative justice kind of program where he has to survive um, in the wilderness on his own for, I wanna say a year. Um, he's not too crazy about it. He thinks he's going to beat the system. And then all of a sudden he realizes like this might not be as easy as he thought. Super good, little gruesome, definitely gruesome enough for freshman boys to really love it. But I really like this one. It's easy to recommend. 
And then I also recommended All I Really Need to Know I Learned in Kindergarten, and it was on fire when I laid down on it. Now this one I only have at home, but I took it in so in case anybody wanted to borrow it, they could. We have copies of All I Really Needed to Learn, I, uh, All I Really Needed to Know I Learned in Kindergarten. Uh, because I always read that essay to them at the beginning of the year and then we talk a little bit about um, a credo and uh, common courtesy and etiquette. We talk about those kinds of things. I love this one. We will work with this article essay for like the whole nine weeks and we will continue through the year referring back to it. So I love Robert Fulgham. Um, and I recommend all of his. I've also talked to you about true love. I think I added it not too long ago too. But I love him. Read him. Great essays. I've talked to you about him multiple times before. All right, let me make sure. But um, like I said, we've had five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven days. That should be eleven recommendations. Mm. Today I recommended uh, Mitch Albom's Tuesdays with Maury, but I don't have them all here for you, so I'll start with that one next time. Good. Okay, so I'm missing a few, but um, I don't have those added in here yet because I've had to take some to school. Um, I mainly just recommend books that I have in my classroom that I can immediately hand someone. But every once in a while, like I'll take some in of mine too, just to make sure if multiple people want them. Um, so I'll stop there. And then next time I will pick up and let you know what else I've recommended in my classroom. They aren't always young adult, but I'm pretty heavy on young adult when I come to recommendations. But there are a lot of authors like John Grisham, Dean Koontz, Stephen King that I feel like um, I still want to make sure I get them out there because I think it's going to make them lifelong readers. All right, give me a minute to adjust. I know the last time I talked to you, I was headed to my book club and I told you I would update you on that. And I'm not going to do that for this one because I don't have those books gathered um, just yet. So I'll update on, um, I will update you on our book club selections for the next year in the next video. Okay, I think I have the right stacks. Um, and I mean, I know if you are someone who watches my videos all the time, you're like, where is your book haul? I didn't go book shopping very much this past month. Um, so I don't have those. So it might be a shorter video than usual, but whatever, you know me, I'm gonna chit chat forever and there's gonna be that, so. Uh, so this is the portion of the show where I talk about revisions, corrections, and updates, and I have a couple of those. <laughs> and the first correction that I have is in the last video, I kept talking to you about my um, book planner, which I don't have right here, but I was showing it to you. I'm super excited about it. It's ALA, um, is it banned books? I feel like maybe. Either way, like I really, really like it, and I told you my cousin, uh, and I both got it, and I said that we got it from Books and More, I think, and it's Books A Million, not Books and More. There's a Books and More, or there used to be in Dayton, Ohio up here, and it was an independent bookstore, but Books A Million is uh, a different place altogether. <laughs> I, they call it BAM, I think. They like that, like Books A Million, BAM. Um, for some reason, I kept referring to it as um, Books and More. Earlier when I talked to you about the Meg, I don't think I mentioned that I had not talked to you about the Meg before. Um, it actually, Yes, I had. Earlier when I talked to you about going to see the Meg 2, um, I think when I looked it up, I was like, I already had a good reads out there for the Meg. And I know I had talked to you about Alton in several videos before, 9, 11, 15, 38. But I don't know that I actually gave you a good uh, review of it, but I feel like I did that earlier when I was talking to you about reading the Meg 1.1. 1. 1. Um, so I'm gonna add that one on there. And then when I was talking to you about books being turned into movies, I told you about a movie being called Emily. It came out in 2022. I still haven't seen it, so it's on my list of things to watch. But it is uh, based off of Emily Bronte's Withering Heights. And I do have a copy of that. And I also had a Goodreads, but I had put that Goodreads out in November 19th of 2019. So I'm not sure I've actually book talked to you Withering Heights. Uh, it's definitely a classic. You can see this is part of that Signet classic. And um, this has one of those like torn cover things. So somewhere it was a donation. I really feel like I picked up a copy of this when I was working in the juvenile prison in um, South Carolina. Like one summer I worked in the, um, what's it called? Like 
juvenile detention services, something like that. Juvenile services, I don't know. Anywho, it was a prison for teenagers, um, and I did it between the summer of my junior and senior year of college. Great experience, definitely eye-opening, made me question wanting to work with teenagers. <laughs> Uh, but we got lots of donations there and I feel like I picked it up there and then somehow it ended up coming home for me pretty sure but um, it's a signet classic uh, it has a very classic cover it's a good size to tackle if you are wanting to read a classic and it is one of those that constantly gets referenced especially as a romantic classic um, you will see this manifested many many times in other movies books and television Heathcliff and Catherine, those names will be familiar with you, even if you have not read Wuthering Heights. They are unforgettable. This story is set in 1801, so think about that. It's also a period drama. And uh, it does take its time. So I often remind people when you are reading a classic, especially one that was written, you know, back in 1801 or set in 1801, you're talking about a time when things went much more slowly and people did not have a lot of choices and they would sit by the fire and read in the evening and uh, they didn't need for something to go like we do now with our thrillers where sometimes they tell you the story at the beginning before they even tell you the story um, just to keep you interested. So a little bit slower, but a great classic, Catherine and Heath, um, Catherine, yes, Catherine and Heathcliff, you will hear those characters and you will see this love story played out over and over again. So it's a classic you should read. I think it was in the last video I had on a new shirt and I think I told you it was Jane Austen and it was not. It was from The Secret Garden. I've never read The Secret Garden by Frances Hodgson Burnett, but I have it. It is also a signet classic, but it has its cover, so I don't know where that one came from. Uh, but so this is on my to-be-read list because now I have a t-shirt with the words on it. I probably should be able to talk about the book. I know what The Secret Garden is, but I have never actually read that classic. So it's on my short list. Um, I added a couple of reviews out there for Clive Cussler because I had talked to you. Actually, this is Michael Conley's Lincoln Lawyer, but it's here because I was going to watch the original Lincoln Lawyer movie with Matthew McConaughey, I think, and I've not done that. So we're just going to set that aside and do that next time. <laughs> I'm not quite as organized. Can you tell school has started back? <laughs> but I did add several reviews out there um, of Clive Cussler. Uh, and I have this book to read by him. It's called The Sea Wolves. I picked it up in a recent haul, and that's what got me thinking about Clive Cussler. Um, and then also this one called Treasure. Uh, and they are ones that I want to read and continue recommending to my students. And I don't know that I've recommended him to my students before. So I added a couple of good read reviews. I've read, at, hmm, I've read Atlantis Found, which is based on the Atlantis theory. I want to go back and read the other Dirk Pitt novels. He is the protagonist in this particular series. Uh, this is number 15 in the Dirk Pitt series, but def I just picked it up. Like it didn't read these in order and you don't need to. It will tell you enough of the backstory. I listened to the audio of this back in October of uh, 2000, and I still remember it fondly. Like I remember Dirk Pitt, I remember um, going on the adventure hunting kind of story with him, and I really enjoyed it enough that I read several other Clive Cusslers after that. So this is easy to recommend to people who like things like National Treasure, those kinds of treasure hunting shows. Um, I went on to read Inca Gold after that, so I'll talk to you about that one here in a minute. I do plan out, I plan to search out the movie Sahara. That's another reason that Clive Cussler came up. I think that that has the character Dirk Pitt in it. And I can't remember, is that also Matthew McConaughey? Maybe, it might be, I don't know. I've got to find that one and I will watch that. I'll update you. Uh, and these are those novels like, I know that Atlantis is a lost city, but that's about all I knew. And you don't need a lot of background to read these stories. He does go into it enough that you're fine. If you don't know anything, he's telling you the background, uh, but not enough that I think it would be boring if you also knew some of the background. And the other one that I read by him was Inca Gold. It's also Dirk Pitt, it's number 12 in the Dirk Pitt series. Um, in this one, Dirk Pitt is attempting to do a rescue of some archeologists that have found themselves in trouble. Um, and he goes to try and save those and then gets caught up again in some other treasure hunting things. 
Inca gold. It takes place in the Andes Mountains and then in Peru. And just that whole search for ancient treasure. It's just, it's a fun read. I enjoyed it. And I will update you as soon as I find Sahara and watch that movie. So that is as far as I got on the updates and corrections before I got to you. I still have a list on there where I'm like, this needs a good read. So you need to chat about this one. But that's as far as I got before I started filming this. So we'll stop there. Definitely have a few movies. Definitely have a few movies that I've added to my short list of you need to watch these and watch these soon. I have added the date October 6th of 2023 to Killers of the Flower Moon. I've already recommended this to you. It's a great, great nonfiction read. I keep trying to add it to our book list, um, uh, reading list, and we still have not because there's only so many meetings every year. But I wanted you to know that that date is October 6th of 2023. Highly recommend that you read it. Um, Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. I think I updated the date on that one also. And then I do have a little bit of a book haul, but I think they're coming from little libraries. Let me check. Oh, well, one book haul I don't have here to show you, even though I hauled it because it was digital. And uh, I think I just did it yesterday, so it may still be available. I have talked to you about the Cozy Case Files. Um, it is a sampling of Cozy Mysteries on Amazon, and it is usually free because they're samplings of like 10 or 15 Cozies. And I have listened to several volumes. I did several of them on, um, oh, what's the one where they give you free books if you put reviews and things out there? You know what I'm talking about. I can't think of the name of that, but I read several of them from that. Um, and then I have picked up several Cozy Mystery series where I've continued to read the series because of the samples. But there's a new Cozy Case Files out there. I don't know what the current number is, but if you look on Amazon, you could probably find it that way. Um, and it's free, so I just downloaded that yesterday. Little hometown um, free little library. I picked up Carl Hyacinth's Scat. I thought that would be a good one to read and put in the classroom. And I picked up Dean Kuhn's Deeply Odd, thankfully, because like I said, now I have a student that wants to read all of them. I don't know what number this is, but this would be um, good that I can loan this one to him. And I've got a pull my other Dean Kuntz to see which other ones I have to loan him to. Uh, I think I've talked to you about Free Booksy, but I'm not sure. If not, Google Free Booksy. It's a great email um, newsletter that comes to you every week with free books. Uh, they are digital downloads. You get them through the Amazon stores and then they go onto my Kindle. Um, and they're not normally authors that I know. So there's that. It just depends on how you like to read. But I really like them because they show me the cover. They give me a little synopsis. And sometimes I just want to throw those easy cozies on there, especially, or an easy young adult that I might want to um, read and be able to recommend in my classes. So free booksy. Uh, it's an email newsletter. And I got Remy London, the Poppy Ridge Cove Collection, Creepy Cozy Mysteries, um, and Rochelle Workman's Zucchini Cake and Zombies. Those are the last two that I got off a of free uh, booksy. So we'll see. I'll review them once I read them. Got way too many on my Kindle right now, but I can't help adding to that, as I'm sure as a fellow book lover, you do the same. Uh, if you follow me on social media, I recently posted from crimereads.com. That's another one that I would follow if I were you and you like crime reads. But crimereads.com crime um, recently had a great article, The Enduring Appeal of Cozy Mysteries, and I thought it was a super good read. I enjoyed it, um, and I would highly recommend it. Actually, I printed it off. I forgot. It looks like this. has a nice little cozy um, picture on the front. And then just talks to you about, like, cozy mysteries and what we find cozy about them. Um, and it is written by Margaret Loudon, who writes A Deadly Dedication. Um, but I really, I enjoyed the article, so I shared it on my social media. Feel free to follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, TikTok, whatever is out there, I'm on it. Um, and I share a lot of bookish news, but as well as my regular life, obviously. I also wanted to mention Pango Books, P-A-N-G-O. Um, I found those through Storm Reads. She's another booktuber that I follow and is in our Killing Time with Cozy's chats. Um, she hosts some of her own reading sprints, and then she always, almost always joins the Killing Time with Cozy's ones on Sunday. And she sells a lot of her books on Pango, so I've just been kind of looking there. 
You know, I try my best not to buy books. You can see I'm a complete failure, but I don't like to spend a lot of money when I do buy books. So I very rarely just walk into a bookstore and buy a book without some kind of a discount. Um, most of mine are thrifted or traded or picked up at a garage sale. Um, but I don't usually pay a lot for my books and Pango look like an interesting place. If I were looking for particular titles to go, I haven't had an experience with it yet, but I did want to throw it out there and say that storm reads does sell on that. You know, I'm going to talk to you about Agatha Christie's new movie that's coming out in September, about September 15th, I do believe. Yes, I've got it on here. A Haunting in Venice. There have been several trailers released. Um, even though the title is A Haunting in Venice, it is mainly focused on the book Halloween Party. So our Agatha group, that is what we are reading. This time we are reading Easy to Kill, which is the next one chronologically. And then we're skipping ahead and reading, uh, or actually we are, yeah, we are skipping ahead and, and reading Halloween Party which Haunting in Venice is kind of based on. I think it's going to be like an amalgamation of several of the Agatha Christie's, but um, that's my understanding. Uh, you can, if you are subscribed to the Agatha Christie newsletter, they've had great coverage on it. They also are doing another movie. It's not set to come out yet, but Murder is Easy. BBC and BritBox are doing an adaptation. Penelope Wilton, if you know who that is, she's going to be Miss Pinkerton, but I've not read Murder is Easy, so I don't know anything about that one, but it is shooting in Scotland. Remember that A Haunting in Venice continues the Agatha Christie legacy um, being directed, co-produced by Kenneth Bronig, I think is how you say his name. It also says that it, feed, it serves as a sequel to Death on the Nile, but I'm not really sure how that is. And I've read both Death on the Nile and Halloween Party, but um, I didn't read Halloween Party to discuss it. I just read it for fun. And that's actually what started my whole Agatha Christie reading chronological thing is that Halloween, I read Halloween Party, and then I knew I had read a couple of other Christies, and I thought, gosh, I really like her. Now, I love mysteries, but I really like her. I wonder how she changes over the course of 66 different novels. Um, so that's how it all got started, actually. But I don't see how Halloween Party is a sequel to Death on the Nile. We'll see. Um, October 12th, Edgar Allan Poe's The Fall of the House of Usher is coming out. So that's on my short to be read list because I have not read that. I feel like I have a stack I should show you. Yep, I got some stuff going on here. Here is that Agatha Christie, The Mousetrap, and Other Plays, where the Appointment with Death play is in here. So that I am currently reading. It's just part of this. This has 10 Little Indians, Appointment with Death, The Hollow, The Mousetrap, Witness for the Prosecution, Toward Zero Verdict, and Go Back for Murder. So some of those were actual Agatha Christie, either short stories or novels turned into plays. And then I'm pretty sure like The Mousetrap is just a play. I don't think it's a novel. Um, but I am reading Appointment with Death, the play version in here. That's on my current list. And then here is Halloween Party, which I have already read before. And I'm pretty sure I also reviewed for you, but I will do it again. Uh, and here's another copy of Halloween Party. I think this is the original one that I read. Um, and then it's kind of falling apart. Here is that Edgar Allan Poe, The Fall of the House of Usher, which I plan to read before it comes out. Um, I want to say that it's a Netflix series, and it's by the same person who did um, Haunting of Hill House. I'm pretty sure. Here's another copy of that, and it says it comes out October 12th, but let's get a good look at that cover. It's a Signet Classic. And then I also have Edgar Allan Poe's Fall of the House of Usher in this. And this is Complete Stories and Poems of Edgar Allan Poe. So you can see, like, I've read several of these. I've taught several of these. Um, but that's on my short to-be-read list because it's coming out October 12th on Netflix. October 13th, um, Garmus Lessons in Chemistry is coming out on Apple TV. And I know that is on our next um, year's book club read. I can't remember what month we're doing that, but we did add that to our... Um, reading list and I've not read that one yet and I know it's super popular and if I'm not mistaken it was even Barnes and Noble's book of the year last year
The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes, the Suzanne Collins one is not um, slated to be out until November 17th. But if you haven't yet gone to that, gotten to that, I'm telling you, I tell you, and then I just know not everybody loves it. I love it. I think, I mean, it might even be my favorite one by Suzanne Collins. It is the origin story or the backstory to Hunger Games. And it's so, so good. It's massive. You know what? She already wrote the series. She sold the series. She made the movies. So when she went to do this one, I love when authors are just like, I'm going to write what I want to write. You don't get to edit it down. You must publish the whole thing. I feel like that's what she did on Ballad of, Bird, of, Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. Um, I highly recommend that you read it before the movie comes out. It's such a good experience. And I say that knowing that it does not get great reviews by everybody. I love it. Some other quick books that are on my um, short to be read list. In our Agatha group, we are also going to read some Sherlock Holmes short stories. Um, I think it's called The Six Napoleons and then The Red-Headed League. I think that's what it's called. Those are the two that we're going to do. And I've been tracking them down. The Red-Headed League is in this one. And then The Six Napoleons, I think I pulled it out of the library today in the complete Sherlock Holmes. So I have both of those now. That's on my short list. I've been reading this, Why Has No One Ever Told Me That? Uh, Why Has Nobody Told Me This Before by Dr. Julie Smith. It's just slowly, slowly, it's really good. It's just taking me forever to read it. I'm still reading something you can count on. Um, the Rosary of the Seven Sorrows of Mary is my devotional and it's going very slowly. And then, man, that Vogue September issue is here. I've already gone through it. I love it. I think it is better than it has been in the past couple of years. It's nice and thick. Remember that I also recommended to you watching the documentary, The September Issue, which talks about the whole backstory to the September Vogue issue. Um, super, super good. I love it. I highly recommend it. I haven't thrown a lot of podcasts out there lately. I've started listening to Mel Robbins. Um, but I'll be honest, sometimes it's just a little much. She's very motivational, inspirational, self-help, and sometimes I'm in the mood for that, and sometimes I'm just not. And when I'm not, then I'm listening to Park Predators, <laughs> which I have recommended to every person I know, and people are really starting to pick up and like it. Um, like, I know, like, they have their own following. They don't need me. But, like, I am an advocate of that podcast. I think they do a fabulous job, and several people, several friends, acquaintances, um, that I've recommended it to have come back and said, Ooh, I am. I'm listening to that now. I really like it. Um, Crime Junkies, I listened to yesterday. Sasquatch Chronicles. Um, as always, I've always mentioned these. Um, but I don't really have anything new. A Beautiful Mess, I've mentioned numerous times. I'll try and remember to put um, one of my introduction pictures as uh, my board right now. When I first start, uh, started the school year, I thought it might be interesting to like generate some conversation and also to have them to do a notebook journal um, talking about like currently, like what are you reading? What are you listening to? What are you watching? So I put some of mine on the board. So I'll try and remember to share that because um, that kind of helps out too when I'm saying, hey, this is what I'm reading or this is what I'm listening to. Okay, I am happy to be your friendly librarian. Thank you for letting me to continue in that capacity as a librarian, even if it is the librarian of my own personal library that my husband built. Um, I enjoy spending this time with you. I look forward to it. I love the planning of it. I love putting the stacks together. I love adding the Goodreads reviews. Um, so thank you for spending some time with me in my library. Remember that all of the books that I recommend to you, I either have Goodread reviews out there for already, or I'm adding them and then I let you know when I add them. Everything's linked to my Facebook and social media. Also remember that you can get access to almost any book, if not all of the books that I talk about free from your public library. Uh, go stop in most Public librarians are friendly and will help you. I know ours are fabulous. You can also get books for free on Libby without ever going into the library if you can just get your public library card, which since uh, COVID has been pretty easy to do online. I know I have several public library cards online and I routinely uh, use Libby. Uh, and Libby is an online app where you can get books on audio for free. You can also get eBooks from Libby. Don't forget to hit that subscribe and like button. My subscribers are over 300 right now, which I think is fabulous and super encouraging. 
my videos are averaging somewhere around 150 to 200 views. So that tells me that maybe, just maybe, I'm not the only book lover out there and I don't really care if a video is an hour or two hours long. Comment, email, message me, let me know. What are you reading? What do you wanna read? Do you need some recommendations? I am happy to share those with you. Keep in touch, folks. Bye.